Oh, okay. Now she'll think we are absolutely crazy. I wouldn't worry too much. You're not exactly the most popular neighbor in the house anyway. Thanks. What? You don't actually care what those idiots think, do you? No. Of course not. It's just that Pauline seems all right. I'm not too proud of causing her all this trouble. It'll get fixed soon. Look, Jesse's gone out. We can now get inside flat seven and see what he's been up to. Very okay. true. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. We can also cross Pauline off the list. I've searched through her internet history, and needless to say, there's nothing exciting there. Cool. Alright, so it's either flat seven or flat six, I guess then. Let's go upstairs. Just to get that out of the way. Door open. Door is locked. Uh, let's see. Oh, never mind. I'll have to be right up against the door because that's how this game works. Now that he's gone, we can get inside. Yes, let's do that. I'll close my eyes and you pick that lock, Mitzi. Okay, but no peeking. <laughs> I'd never. You've really hurt my feelings now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now close them. There. Job done. Awesome. Jesus, oh. are these... Relax, Mrs. A. They're just Halloween masks. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. Because I swear, if I see another bloody head... <laughs> Alright, uh... Halloween masks take clown mask. I hate clowns so much, I'd rather not touch this mask at all. True, double... I get terribly sweary, sweaty wearing it. There's such thing as too much rubber. Um, <laughs> hockey mask, I guess. Um, plants examine. None of these look illegal. I guess he just likes plants. You you think he smokes pot, don't you? That's one. That this one's pretty big. Yeah, I can. Speaker examine. The speaker is massive, and it's connected to Jesse's computer. Whenever you play some music, the walls must be shaking. Just sounds like my kind of music. Uh, Jesse's PC. Examine. It's Jesse's PC. It's the infamous source of the noise. Uh, switch on. That won't work. It seems someone's cut off power. Haha, <laughs> that was us. Um, window examine. I can hear some late evening traffic through the open window. Oh, uh, there's the flat downstairs extension cord yeah and then now I have to plug in so who's got windows over this side of the building well Joe Davis lives right below I guess we could also check one flat below Joe's I just hope the cable's long enough let's will, find yeah. out shall we Knowing this game. Alright, see, yeah, this is the backtracking level where we gotta backtrack all the goddamn time. Uh, staircase. First floor. We like switch places. Um. Here we go. Flat one, open. Let's go inside. Right. Now let's. I wish we could like sprint in this game. That would have improved it a lot better. Here we go. Just socket plug in. Awesome. Now let's go all the way back upstairs. Oh, because my god, there's a lot of backtracking in this game. This might just get edited out. Probably won't, though, knowing me. Uh, top floor. Over 
this way. Door open. Let's go in. And you use this computer. Right. I should be able to use that computer now. Could you give me five minutes, Mrs. A? Sure. Why not? I'll keep an eye on the door. Either. God damn it. Oh, so it is Brian then. Okay. But I'm guessing we still have to investigate him. Probably. Oh, we can uh do the cap widow thing, whatever Susan was talking about before. We can do it now. Yay! Guys, I'm like dying. From sweating. It's extremely hot outside. And of course, like, I can't have any, like, fans running and. or anything like that because then it affects cording. So. I'm just dying here. Uh. Bicycle use. White dress, use. Black is my color. I like it so much better now. Awesome. Uh, let's get the black dress, hang back. Uh, red paint. Oh, oh, I might have to be. Nope. Uh, red paint. Examine. Not a great color for your bedroom walls, but would be perfect for writing threatening message. Miss messages on the walls instead. It worked for Joe Davis anyway, unless of course those three sixes on his bathroom doors were written in real blood. I think so. Uh, cut. We need to make some adjustments. Now this is a dress worthy of the cat widow. <laughs> Why don't you admit it was too small for you? Ha ha, bloody ha. Why don't you just shut up? <laughs> Whoever wore this dress probably hadn't eaten in years. You'd struggle to get a skeleton into it. This is it. We've got all we need. Great. Are you going to tell me about the Cat Widow now? Yes. It's story time, Mitzi. The legend says there was once a bad man who hated cats. He hated his neighbors, too, and his job. And when it rained, he'd curse and smash things. He hated his bald head and his weak, ugly body. He probably hated himself the most, although he would never admit it. I think I see where this is going. One day, out of pure hatred for the whole world and everything that lives, he captured a family of cats and drowned them all in the river. That day, the sun turned black and all the birds went silent as the six kittens struggled for life. But trapped in a strong canvas bag, they never had a chance. They all died that day. All but one. The mother cat, in a desperate fight to set herself free, by pure luck, clawed her way out of the bag and swam to the shore. She lost everything that day. Her beautiful children and her proud husband. Her heart crashed into pieces as she watched their limp, dead bodies stolen by the current. 
running after them. She followed them for days, for as long as she could. Then, eventually, she lost sight of them. She stayed on the bank of the river for a while. The world stopped turning for her, her eyes empty and blind. And then, one day, she slowly slid down the bank and into the cold, dark water. She gave in to it. She let the river take her away too, cover her mouth, her ears, her eyes. But as the water filled her lungs and she started slipping into darkness, there was another strange feeling that burst in her mind like a ball of flames. Anger. Rage, even. Her last craving, before she drowned, was for revenge. For blood. And so she returned, reborn and changed. A cat widow, veiled in black, mistress of the cats. Her body of a young woman, but her eyes of a cat. And her face, white, rotten, face of a corpse, those who saw it rarely lived to tell the tale. She would get her revenge on all cat killers and cat torturers, but there was someone she had to see first, someone special, someone she really hated the most. As the evening came, it was strangely quiet in the man's flat as he lived alone. He usually liked to fill the silence with the sound of radio or TV shows. But that night, he switched them all off, feeling anxious and tired after work. He tried to sleep, but couldn't. And for once, there wasn't anyone there he could blame for it. As he stared through the window, he kept thinking about how much he hated that view. He liked it once, a long time ago, when his wife was still there and they were happy together. Suddenly, he heard knocking on the door. Some part of him was glad, because that meant he could take it out on whoever decided to bother him. There was nobody there. He almost felt disappointed. But before he turned to walk away, he suddenly noticed something down the hall. On a nearby wall, there was a giant shadow of a cat. He noticed a shadow of a cloaked figure standing ahead. A dead body of a disembowelled cat hung on the radiator. Ooh, uh. So we get to tell the story. Um, I think shadows are better, so let's go with this one. On a nearby wall, there was a giant shadow of a cat. He stopped again. He couldn't believe his eyes. Someone wrote cat killer on his door. There was a cat skull stuck on the seat of his bike. Someone wrote asshole on his door. Um, let's go with this one. There was a cat's skull stuck on the seat of his bike. He had a passion for trains. Although he hated being a train driver, he had always enjoyed watching them move. But now, his train model was moving all on its own. He was absolutely certain he'd left it switched off. And yet, there it was, running at crazy speed. 
remote control missing. Something was seriously wrong. And that something had entered his home now too. He hoped he was just imagining things, tired as he was. But there was another surprise waiting for him in his bedroom. A giant blood soup zombie cat on his bed. Cat Widow is here, was written all over the walls. Cat Widow is here, was written all over the wall. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. Uh, this one, I guess. As in a dream, he went to the kitchen to get a drink. was no water. He knew there were valves in the basement that turned it off, but no one's been down there for years. He felt sick. None of this made any sense. And yet, deep down, he knew what he did to the cats was wrong. There was a part of him that almost wanted to be punished. The part he tried so hard to hide. He thought he'd heard something in the corridor, was there someone there with him? His head was spinning. He felt ambushed, trapped, like an animal. He had to get out of there. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. Getting really scared now, he decided to call the police. His phone was of no use. The SIM card had been removed, and that wasn't even the worst part. There was a photo of a black cat set as screensaver. He remembered this cat. He'd watched that strange pest control man put it in a cage and into his van. He'd looked at it through the window for a while, then pulled the curtains and went to bed. He stopped, paralyzed. He'd heard something right in front of him. A whisper, more like a purr. She was there, in the dark corner of his living room, waiting. Black veil covering that pale, dead face, and yet, he could almost feel Cat Widow's eyes piercing through him. Cat Widow aimed a shotgun at his chest and fired. She came closer like a ghost and swiftly removed the veil. She came closer like a ghost and swiftly removed the veil. She came back for him, to take him to the river, to make him pay for what he'd done. As he looked into her eyes, he could feel the world spinning around him, his knees go weak, his pants suddenly wet around his crotch. <laughs> as much as he hated life, he didn't want to die either. Inside, he was just a big, stinking coward. And then... He fainted. Ha ha ha! Did you see his face? I knew he'd fall for this. Yeah, we scared the living shit out of him. Now that's teamwork. Are you sure he won't know it was you, though? Oh, he probably will. 
once he's had time to think about what happened. But he's too proud to ever admit he's been beaten by a woman. I know him just about enough to know that. Let's hope so. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. No. That was something I had to do for myself. And I feel much better for it. The only problem now is that we still haven't found Eye of Adam. Because it definitely isn't Brian. I've searched through his laptop and all I found was a load of porn. Let's cross him off the list. So it's no one? What? Well, that means we've checked everyone. We've hit a brick wall. Perhaps I was wrong. Maybe he doesn't live here at all. I think we need to sleep on it. And we might get some more ideas in the morning. Shall we head back home? Yeah, I do feel tired. You're right, we need some sleep. Really wish there was an elevator in this building. <laughs> What's that? A note? What does it say, Mrs. A? You will not believe it. Meet me at midnight, both of you. I will wait. Flat five. Door will be open. Do not fear. Eye of Adam. Five. That's the old guy. It can't be. It can't be him. It's not him. I guess we'll find out. At midnight. I don't think We've that's him. got a few hours until then. Let's get some coffee. There's no way it can be him. What were we doing back down here? What? What? Oh! It's just you and me, my love. No one will find us here. Stop worrying, Ivy. It will be alright. I will always love you. You know that. I'm gonna make you all better. Yeah, that happened. <laughs>